Ubuntu Touch in 2026 feels like the quiet comeback story nobody expected but many hoped for. A mobile operating system that never tried to win by copying Android or iOS yet somehow survived long enough to finally mature into something truly its own. To understand why Ubuntu Touch in 2026 matters, you have to rewind a bit and remember what it was always meant to be. From the very beginning, Ubuntu Touch was not designed as just another smartphone OS. It was designed as a vision of convergence, a future where one operating system could power your phone, your tablet, your laptop, and even your desktop, adapting its interface depending on the screen it was connected to. For years, that idea felt ahead of its time, and when Canonical stepped away from active development, many people assumed Ubuntu Touch would slowly fade into obscurity. But thanks to the dedication of the Upports community, that didn't happen. Instead, Ubuntu Touch quietly evolved, and by 2026, it has reached a level of polish, practicality, and philosophical clarity that makes it more relevant than ever. In 2026, Ubuntu Touch exists in a very different mobile landscape. Android and iOS still dominate, but cracks are visible. Users are increasingly uncomfortable with data collection, locked down ecosystems, forced cloud dependencies, and hardware that becomes obsolete far too quickly. At the same time, there's renewed interest in open source platforms, digital ownership, and user control. Ubuntu Touch fits perfectly into this shift. It doesn't try to be everything for everyone. Instead, it speaks directly to users who care about privacy, longevity, transparency, and freedom. When you boot Ubuntu Touch in 2026, you immediately feel that difference. There are no aggressive onboarding screens asking you to sign into half a dozen services. There's no pressure to link your identity to the OS just to make basic features work. The system belongs to you, not the other way around. The user interface of Ubuntu Touch in 2026 feels refined and confident. The gesture-based navigation that once felt experimental now feels natural and cohesive. Swiping from the edges of the screen to access apps, switch tasks, or return home is smooth and intuitive. And after a short learning curve, many users find it faster than traditional button-based navigation. The Lemiri interface, which evolved from Unity 8, has matured significantly. Animations are fluid, transitions are consistent, and the overall visual design strikes a balance between minimalism and functionality. It doesn't chase flashy trends or excessive visual effects. Instead, it focuses on clarity, readability, and efficiency, which makes it particularly pleasant for long-term daily use. One of the biggest strengths of Ubuntu Touch in 2026 is how it handles multitasking. Unlike many mobile operating systems that aggressively suspend apps in the background, Ubuntu Touch gives the user more control. Apps can continue running when needed, background processes are more transparent, and the system feels less restrictive overall. This is especially noticeable for power users who rely on messaging apps, terminal tools, or background services. Ubuntu Touch doesn't assume you don't know what you're doing. It respects your choices and gives you the tools to manage your device responsibly. App availability has always been one of the biggest questions around Ubuntu Touch, and in 2026, the situation is better than it has ever been. While it still doesn't compete with Android or iOS in sheer app numbers, the quality and relevance of available apps have improved significantly. Many essential apps, including browsers, email clients, messaging platforms, media players, and productivity tools, are well-maintained and optimized for the platform. The open store has matured into a stable ecosystem with clearer guidelines, better discoverability, and more consistent updates. Developers who care about open source values and cross-platform compatibility have found Ubuntu Touch to be an appealing target, especially as web technologies and progressive web apps continue to improve. In 2026, web apps play a major role in making Ubuntu Touch practical as a daily driver. Modern web apps are faster, more capable, and more responsive than ever before, and Ubuntu Touch integrates them seamlessly. Many users rely on web versions of popular services for social media, banking, collaboration, and content consumption, and the experience is surprisingly smooth. Combined with a strong, privacy-respecting browser, this approach reduces the dependency on proprietary native apps while still delivering functionality that meets everyday needs. For users who prioritize privacy and simplicity, this trade-off feels not only acceptable but empowering. Privacy and security are central to Ubuntu Touch's identity in 2026. The system is built with sandboxing, permission controls, and open-source transparency at its core. Users can see what apps are doing, control what data they can access, 
and trust that there are no hidden trackers embedded at the system level. Because the code is open and community-driven, vulnerabilities are discussed openly and addressed collaboratively. This doesn't mean Ubuntu Touch is magically immune to security issues, but it does mean that users are treated as participants rather than products. In an era where trust in big tech is increasingly fragile, that philosophy resonates strongly. Hardware support in 2026 is another area where Ubuntu Touch has quietly made progress. While it still doesn't support every device under the sun, the list of officially supported and community-supported devices has grown more stable and reliable. Devices from manufacturers that embrace open bootloaders and community development tend to offer the best experience. Performance on supported hardware feels snappy and efficient, partly because Ubuntu Touch is not weighed down by heavy background services or aggressive telemetry. Older devices, which might struggle with the latest Android versions, often feel refreshed and usable again when running Ubuntu Touch. This extends the life of hardware and aligns perfectly with growing concerns about electronic waste and sustainability. One of the most exciting aspects of Ubuntu Touch in 2026 is how close it feels to realizing the original dream of convergence. Connecting a supported device to an external display transforms the interface into a desktop-like environment. With a keyboard and mouse attached, Ubuntu Touch begins to feel less like a phone OS and more like a lightweight Linux desktop. You can run desktop-style applications, manage files more easily, and perform tasks that would normally require a laptop. While it may not replace a high-end workstation for everyone, it is more than capable for writing, browsing, coding, and general productivity. For students, travelers, and minimalists, this kind of setup is incredibly appealing. The terminal experience on Ubuntu Touch in 2026 is another standout feature, especially for Linux enthusiasts. Having access to a real Linux environment in your pocket opens up possibilities that traditional mobile operating systems simply don't offer. You can use command line tools, manage servers remotely, write scripts, and experiment with development workflows on the go. This doesn't turn Ubuntu Touch into a niche hacker-only platform, but it does make it uniquely powerful for those who want that level of control. Importantly, all of this exists alongside a user-friendly interface, so the system remains accessible to non-technical users as well. Community is perhaps the most important reason Ubuntu Touch is still alive in 2026. The UBPORT's community has grown into a passionate, knowledgeable, and welcoming group of developers, testers, translators, and users. Updates are communicated transparently, development priorities are discussed openly, and contributions are encouraged at every level. This sense of shared ownership creates a very different relationship between users and the operating system. When you use Ubuntu Touch, you don't feel like you're consuming a product designed by a distant corporation. You feel like you're participating in a living project shaped by people who genuinely care about it. In everyday use, Ubuntu Touch in 2026 feels stable and reliable. Crashes are rare, performance is consistent, and updates are generally smooth. The system doesn't constantly change its interface or remove features without explanation. Instead, improvements are incremental and deliberate. This stability makes it especially appealing for users who value predictability over novelty. You don't wake up one day to find your workflow completely disrupted by a redesign you didn't ask for. Ubuntu Touch evolves, but it does so with respect for existing users. Of course, Ubuntu Touch in 2026 is not without its limitations. Some popular proprietary apps are still unavailable or only accessible through web interfaces. Gaming options are limited compared to mainstream platforms. Certain hardware features, like advanced camera processing or biometric authentication, may not be fully supported on all devices. For some users, these compromises are deal-breakers. But for others, they are a fair price to pay for a system that prioritizes freedom, privacy, and long-term usability over convenience and trend chasing. What makes Ubuntu Touch in 2026 truly interesting is not that it suddenly overtakes Android or iOS, because it doesn't. Its importance lies in the fact that it offers a credible alternative a proof that mobile computing doesn't have to be locked down, opaque, or exploitative. It shows that a community-driven, Linux-based mobile OS can survive, mature, and remain relevant even in a market dominated by tech giants. For users who have felt increasingly uncomfortable with the direction of mainstream platforms, Ubuntu Touch feels like a breath of fresh air. Looking ahead, Ubuntu Touch in 2026 feels less like a relic of a failed experiment and more like a foundation for a different kind of future. As convergence improves, 
hardware support expands, and web technologies continue to advance, the line between mobile and desktop computing will blur even further. Ubuntu Touch is uniquely positioned to take advantage of that shift, because it was designed for it from the beginning. The system doesn't need to reinvent itself to stay relevant. It simply needs to keep refining what it already does well. In the end, Ubuntu Touch in 2026 is not about winning market share or dominating headlines. It's about choice. It's about giving users the option to own their devices, understand their software, and shape their digital lives according to their own values. For some, that will always be a niche appeal. But niches matter, especially when they push the industry forward by proving that alternatives are possible. Ubuntu Touch stands as a reminder that technology can still be built around users rather than corporations. And in a world that increasingly feels controlled and commodified, that reminder is more valuable than ever.